And welcome back to another podcast with Mr. Hagen. On this podcast, we're going to continue with the short run aggregate supply aggregate demand model. And uh, this time, we're going to start with a uh, shift of the short run aggregate supply curve and uh, run that run that through the model. So let's get right at it. Let's do a real world event, and let's say that my uh, let's say that the real world event. Uh, let's say maybe like uh, back in the 1970s where we get a a uh, significant increase for whatever reason uh, significant increase in the price of oil significant increase uh, in the price of oil and maybe this in 1970s it was uh, Middle Eastern countries cutting production it was all, all kind of stuff uh, significant increase in the price of oil sorry and that's that's going to be my determinant for that is going to be a uh, negative supply shock that's going to be a negative supply shock if you go back and look at the video on uh, short and aggregate supply determinants. So that's going to be a negative supply shock. That's going to raise the cost of doing business and that's going to reduce the amount that companies can produce uh, across the aggregate economy and that's going to cause the short and aggregate supply curve to shift into the left. Now when the short and aggregate supply curve shifts into the left as companies begin to reduce production, production begins to decline and when there's fewer goods and services than available that's going to cause the price of those goods and services to begin to rise and we're going to get some inflation. Uh, we're going to get some inflation. The price of goods and services are going to begin to rise. So so my shift was the short run aggregate expen uh, aggregate uh, supply curve is going to uh, shift to the left and that's going to drive up prices. So let's record that down here. My aggregate supply story is going to be that we got an increase in the price of oil, that increase in the price of oil, and the increase in the price of oil caused a uh, decrease in production. It raised the cost of doing business and as a result of that uh, the aggregate supply curve shifts into the left as companies reduce production. Now what happens on the dem on the aggregate demand side? Well that's going to be a movement along the curve. That's going to be a story about moving along the curve. So as production decreases, as companies reduce production and and the uh, and I should have finished down here by the way as companies reduce production that's also going to cause that's going to cause the price of goods and services to rise okay so this this is just the price of oil this is the price of all goods and services so now we're getting some inflation as production goes down the price of all goods and services are going to begin to rise now that leads to an aggregate demand story we could do three aggregate demand stories here. We could do the wealth effect, the interest rate effect, the international trade effect. I'm just going to do the wealth effect right here just to, just to pick one. Okay, but let's say the wealth effect. The wealth effect is going to be my aggregate demand story. And what's going to happen here? Well, as prices begin to rise, that's going to cause my real wealth. My real wealth is going to begin to decline. My real wealth is going to begin to fall, right? So this is the idea that, you know, if I was a millionaire and the prices of goods and services double, well, you know, I, I still have a million dollars, uh, but the million dollars doesn't go as far as it used to. My real wealth is going to decline. My real ability to buy goods and services is going to decline, and that's going to cause uh, me to engage in less consumption. So consumption is going to fall and so production goes down, prices go up, spending begins to fall as a result and that's going to lead to our lower gross domestic product. And so what's what's going to be the final answer here? The final answer is that we're going to get inflation. Sorry. We're going to get inflation, not a higher GDP. We're going to get inflation. Prices are going to are going to go up. The gross domestic product is actually going to go down, and we're going to get an increase in unemployment. And by the way, this has a, a name to it. When you get higher prices and lower gross domestic product, that's like the worst of all worlds, right? You're dealing at the same time as GDP production incomes are going down, inflation is going up. So there's a term for this. We call this 
this in economics, we call this stagflation. This is called stagflation. The, the stag part is saying that the economy is stagnant. We're not having economic growth. And then the flation part, that's like, that's, you know, inflation. So we have stagflation. Prices are rising. Uh, gross domestic product's going down. Unemployment's going up. Uh, every, everything's just, you know, going in the opposite direction of, of we want of the direction we want it to go in. All right. So this is an example of shifting the short and aggregate supply curve and then moving along the aggregate demand curve. And let's just come back to that aggregate demand curve one more time. Remember, there's really three stories we could have told here. And the three stories that we could have told are the wealth effect story, the uh, interest rate, uh, 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 sorry, the uh, interest rate effect, the interest rate effect, and the international that's an I, the international trade effect, the international trade effect. All three of those, uh, the wealth effect will cause a decrease in consumption, the interest rate effect will cause a decrease in investment, and the international trade effect will cause a decrease in the net exports. I'm not going to go into the, to the details of all of these stories, but that's what's going to happen, and we went through the details of the wealth effect. All right, this has been uh, another podcast with Mr. Hagen. Thanks for joining me, and... We'll see you on the next podcast.